And that's why apples and pears uh, produce fruit more consistently than, let's say, apricots or nectarines or pe peaches, some of the pitted fruits, because it blooms so late in April, it gets it out of the risk of frost. So many of the uh, apricots, they, they, were, they were killed, not killed, the trees are <laughs> fine, but the fruit was taken last week. Because of that, remember that uh, cold wind, just we frosted like three times last week, that would have taken the fruit. Apples and pears, they just decided to open up this week. And so they're out of that risk of frost. So this is called a triple play. What we did is we took three fruit trees, three apples, we planted them in a cluster. Three trees, you plant one, one cluster, like an aspen cluster, into a hole, and then there's three different apples, so you're harvesting the Fujis at once. When they're just about done at harvesting those, you get the delicious, or you go for the whatever the three uh, apples are. So now they pollinate each other, so it gets you bigger fruits and more fruits, and it's just pretty, just unusual to see a tree like this. So I brought that one instead of a regular something boring. I'm talking to gardeners. So I, gotta, I can't have the normal, you gotta have something different. And then someone brought a picture of this. It went into bloom in our test gardens across the street uh, today. So it went into full bloom. This is a rock rose. Yeah, got it. It's a uh, native, drought hardy, tough as nails. Animals don't eat it. They are not interested. Javelina, deer, rabbit. It just grows about knee high. Um, about knee high, kind of mounting like this. Uh, you count it to bloom, end of, end of April through May, first part of June. Long, long bloom cycle. So again, cliff, rock rose. I want to call it cliff rose. Okay. Cliff rose is blooming too. But yes, it is. That's the yellow one, the yellow native flower.